Hey all, Avros here, back with the next fight, the Lufania for the Lost Chapter for everyone's favourite roguish but lovable red-headed Turk, Reno. This time he's not chasing after Aerith, but fighting for his life against two castle guardian bosses. That said, he didn't make the cut for my team for this Lufania. This was a fight that needed a very specific setup to get through with Bart, and he's not exactly the best choice for this one. Bart's this is obviously because he has no healing, nor does Reno, so not really the greatest setup. Thankfully though, this fight has no Lufania orbs that allowed me to be a bit more flexible with what I was trying to do. Additional notes about these bosses. They have a Mist Wreath Aura effect at 79, 49, and 29% HP, or if one of them dies before the other, the remaining one will get the aura. This causes a HP damage effect each turn to your active party member, as well as giving a 50% bravery damage reduction and a 70% HP damage reduction to both bosses while they have the effect up, although they will get them separately when they hit the thresholds. They also have multiple dangerous attacks you need to look out for, with some sort of mitigation or avoidance effect like Reno's Pyramid, Warrior of Light's Bitter End, or something like a Paralysis, Terror, or Sleep effect, especially the ones during the Mist Wreath or their recast attacks, as these do a lot of HP damage and do things like removing your buffs and other things like that, so definitely something to look out for. Moving on to the actual fight itself. This was one that required a lot of decision making, so I'm going to try and talk through this fight as it actually occurs. So you should be seeing on screen now the Castle Guardians have just spawned in, and with the setup that I had here and the timing with the initial start of this fight, they did actually get one of their attacks up first for the party, so I just had to deal with Bart's getting broken there and not getting any of his turns early on, and uh, work my way through what I was going to do here. So trying to figure out if I could use Slash Combo with Titus and keep him at the front of the turn order, unfortunately could not, so I had to settle for his quick hit, and then again check in that Slash Combo to see if it would, uh, if it would time perfectly with the break on the B boss there that actually did get him back to the start of the turn order there. So Eldnarch was the unit I brought along for this fight to deal with the massive attacks the bosses have, trying to use his terror effect there to utilize that to stop the bosses from actually being able to attack for most of this fight and especially not do any sort of HP attacks. So I brought along Celez as his LD call and his regular call there obviously, uh, as you would have seen, to use that lock effect so that the terror would be effective throughout the entire fight and then immediately use Phase Shift on him to get that Terror up after using his C65, the Extend debuffs there, and then used his LD, the Exceed Lance as well, get all of his debuffs up, max out the debuff slots, which will increase Titus's damage as he does do more damage based on how many debuffs the enemies have, and then used his buff longer slash there when I couldn't get uh, to the front of the turn order again with the slash combo, just to keep his uh, buff up there, the Winning Spirit, and using his quick hit again to keep him at the start and get that check shot for the re-break. Trying to get the bosses down below 79% HP roughly at the same time here as to get that first wreath order up so I can take advantage of that without taking too much uh, HP damage on any of the party members for their turns as I'm trying to make sure that the limited healing I've brought with the calls on Titus, which is Iroha, will be enough to keep the party at full health. So just use Titus's LD there for this one to get him some free abilities and keep him with that winning spirit up and at the start of the turn order. So again, buff longer slash get a free use out of that with the LD. And just trying to keep him at the uh, front of the turn order, like I said, get as much use out of that shoot and jack shot as I can and keep winning spirit up. So using energy rain there to fully restack it for this fight. Now, Bart's has finally gotten a turn, a turn order, a lot of turns there from Titus. He's uh, really a great turn hog for something like this. Um, so using Missile, starting to get his mastery up, and using Eldnarch as you typically would in a fight like this, using his abilities on his own turns, and any turns he'll get from Warp will be mostly used for HP++, unless I need to use some other ability to get his EX charged. And uh, yeah, not too much out of the ordinary here, just checking to see if I can get Titus in a good spot with Slash combo and using that where I can just to get the AoE damage up on the both bosses there with that having splash and yeah keeping their health sort of even so 80 and 82 percent there on the two bosses so again warp using a HP plus plus here from Elden Arch, just kind of tracking the health double hand from Bart's that should get that one down to 80 now they're both on the same amount of health gonna go for HP plus plus again get the first one down below 79 percent and it'll get the first mystery to the fight up. Uh, not too many turns before it gets its attack, so we're just going to try and knock both down below the 79%, and uh, 
make the most of Terra here, stopping those attacks. They do delay themselves and they get the mystery, so there is a few turns of the dot there you need to deal with. So you definitely do need to bring someone with healing. With a party composition like I did, like I said, I had to be very uh, economical, is probably the best way to put it with the healing here. So maximizing my damage output, trying not to speed Titus to the front of the turn order, and the Jack Shot Rebreak does not happen while the Mist Wreath is up. Something to keep in mind if you are running him as well for this fight. And yeah, using Stellar Burst here with Elden Arch, just getting the damage up as much as I can. And can't attack you to Terror on A. That'll get a warp. And Magitek Ice Block will trigger there from the call from Sellers. And just going to hit the Vortex again. Make sure we keep that Terror up. Utilizing that as much as we can anytime Terror is available to keep the uh, Terror debuff up. Because we don't need to keep that up for the full fight. And Mist is cleared. And we're not doing too badly, both of them down to 75% HP and 77% respectively. Something you might have noticed just while this fight's going on, I'm going to take a bunch of turns here with Titus, uh, try and take as many as I can with him and uh, do as much damage as we can now that they're below that first Mist Wreath. But something you would have noticed is I didn't bring a friend unit at all for this fight. So this is something I attempted a couple of times with bringing a friend Cloud of Darkness. And there wasn't a good time with this team composition where, um, I'm just gonna use Fujin's LD here, just gonna cut in, <laughs> um, so I can use Bart's burst phase here. So yeah, Fujin LD, burst phase, and then the usual Bart's burst phase order for this fight. So yeah, friend Cloud of Darkness, or any of the other friends I tried to bring, I tried bringing uh, friend Tifa and friend Sephiroth for this fight. None of them really worked out with a good timing going into this one as for, Friend Cloud of Darkness, bringing her along and wanting to switch out one of the party members. Either I'm switching out Titus, which means I can't take advantage of her burst effect as effectively, or I'm switching out Bart's, which means I can't use her burst effect during Bart's burst phase, or I'm switching out Elden Arch. And if I'm switching out Elden Arch, then I don't have the Terror Lock in case the bosses get any turns uh, if I can't get rid of Cloud of Darkness effectively. And if I knock their health down too much and the friend unit I've brought in takes a lot of chip damage from that uh, Mist Wreath effect and then leaves combat, that HP damage I can't ever recover and I can't make the requirement, which is very low on the HP damage front for this one. So couldn't really bring a friend unit with the party composition I was using here. So coming out of Bard's burst phase now, we're just back into sort of maintaining the terror buff here with Elden Arch, doing as much damage as we can here with Titus, using his quick hit if we can't get slash combo to the front of the turn order, and stacking Bard's uh, burst phase aura there, so using his uh, C65 there to get the A buff up on him, and then using any attack there, getting his um, burst fully stacked there, the full three there above the burst aura so again triggering the terror effect no extra attacks extra warp and then using his exceed lance here just making sure we keep all those debuffs up make sure we keep warp up and utilizing all of that as best we can as us through paradise as well up and back to using quick hit again on titus so this section of the fight now that we've used Bart's burst is we're racing down to that 49% threshold here for the next Mist Wreath and trying to make as much damage as we can using that burst effect there as it is giving us a lot of additional um, sort of caps there on HP and bravery damage so that we can just really abuse that effect as long as Bart doesn't get too many turns so anytime Elden Arch warps to the front of the uh, turn order when the bosses take a turn or any turns that Titus can hog is really just giving us a lot more damage here so Keep Winning Spirit up, keep those possibilities on Titus. We're trying to get as many shots in as we can, and trying to get them down again, roughly at the same time to that 49% threshold so that we can utilize the Terror debuff on both of them, minimize the amount of times we have to take ticking that damage, which up that Ianuki there from Bart's, we've got them both down to that 49%. So two mysteries go up, they delay themselves by a turn. We get a free ability usage here with uh, Eldnarch, which we use on the debuff act longer. Um, get a launch that does no real damage, but that's fine. And then we go ahead and use Vortex, because it's back really charged here. And that gets the Terra back up for another four turns on both, making sure that we keep that up for the remainder of the fight, basically, from here on out. Um, it hasn't dropped off at all, but it is something you just want to just hammer home, just keep that Terra up as much as you can. If it does drop off, you're going to put yourself in serious danger, so... Um, Getting that extra damage here, attacking the one without the Mist Wreath Aura because we want to make 
that one take as much damage as possible and also not attack into the HP damage reduction that that aura does provide. And extra turns from Warp here. Um, the extra turn's really helpful on Eld March here to get his EX recharged. Obviously, any extra turns he takes is more opportunities to charge that one. And at this point, now we've gone through two of them, decided to use Aroha's LD here, heal the party up, get a launch in the process, do as much damage as we can. And Titus comes back in here as well. He's got his uh, core buff now as well, and everyone's back to full health. So next part of this fight is, again, utilize as much of these turns as we can, race down to that 29% threshold. And we're just going to just abuse Titus's um, speed here. So using that slash combo when we can, it does have the splash, the quick hit doesn't. And taking advantage of the uh, rebreak on his jack shot every time it's up. Bartz doesn't get a huge amount of turns in this fight, so used a lot of his Missile and Double Hand, uh, expecting that I might need his um, Elemental Finisher later in the fight, and then ended up not getting as many turns on him as I would have thought, so I actually probably could have used his LD a lot more in this fight to just get the damage up faster, but that's a, a lesson I did learn from doing the fight and getting this all done. I had a lot of trouble, actually, with this one to get Bartz through it, so we was just playing this very cautiously for this one. So, Stellar Burst here from Elden Arch, we're just keeping those debuffs up. Locks actually run out on the B-Boss there from the Seller's Call, but because they are going for an all attack, it won't matter, because that recast does target everybody, and Terra will lock them out of doing that, because all targets Elden Arch as well. And so there's no problem with the lock falling off the rest of this fight, as they will continue to target everybody until they get that recast off, which they're never going to get a chance to do with the Terra up. So, uh... Quick hit again, slash combo not getting him to the front. But you can also watch when you're doing the slash combo thing, if Titus is going to end up behind whichever boss is sort of furthest forward in the order, but he's going to break them, then you can use that as well to um, get into that right position because the break will also count. Making sure to use the buff longer slash, maybe you've got an opportunity to keep his buffs up a little bit longer so you're not relying on actually hitting the energy rain every time you need to. So when I noticed it was close to getting fully charged, using that way you can, because the shot will still come out of that attack as well, so you can get the extra damage. And we've gotten one of the bosses here below the 29%, so we've got the first miss wreath up, so we're going to use Omega Javelin here on Old Notch, get the other one below the 29%. They both delay themselves here. And we are off to the races. This is the last mist wreath we need to worry about, so getting them bit more damage, use energy rain here, um, winning spirit was about to run out, that'll give us the three stacks of it back, we still get the shot, damage not as good with the mist wreath up, and again, both of them terror locked, so there goes the mist on the B, extra turn from warp for Elden Arch, and we'll just get some free damage up here with Vortex, as uh, that's now charged again, this will restack terror, it was down to one turn on the B, uh, I think it had two turns left on A, but that gives us another two turns of terror here, and didn't want to use his uh, C65, the debuff longer throw, because we didn't want them to take too many turns and get extra sort of dot damage up. And we go into summon. Boss is weak to thunder damage here, so Rama is a really good choice for summon. And no more mysteries for the rest of the fight now that they're below 29% HP, unless we kill one of them before the other. So I was very careful here to make sure we're evenly damaging them down. And... Uh, yeah, just sort of damaging through the summon phase here, we get to Titus's turn, and we're just gonna not really worry too much about where he is in the turn order, he's gonna get that jack shot off. This is the slash combo doing the splash damage is the best option under summon, as we've got plenty of turns there before the bosses will get another shot. And yeah, quick hit here, because we wanted to keep him at the start of the turn order for the summon phase, just really maximize his damage output. Um, Bart's has still got just one turn left of that aura, so we're trying to utilize as much as we can under summon. Um, slash combo was going to put him in a good spot, but decided with the low counts there, go for the slice and dice so we get free use of them back, and that'll keep him at the start of the turn order as well, which is probably the smartest decision um, here under that summon phase. And we'll come out of summon here. I think both of them were around 10%, so hitting them with 12% here, and that should get it down to 10. I think that one should be about 12 ish. No, I think 14 there. Um, so, that one's lined up for a launch. We'll hit Exceed Lance here on Eld Arch. We're just gonna really start throwing out the big Haymaker swings here. Big abilities to try and 
finish these bosses off before too much time, time passes here, too many more turns. This fight has a pretty uh, tight turn count, it's only 65 turns, so with the free abilities out of warp and the free uh, quick hit plus, because it doesn't count for the turn count, really does keep your turns low so you can get through this fight without too much trouble. Free slash combo here, it's going to break the B boss, we get splash, he's still got another turn towards the start of the turn track, we get the jack shot off now, no more mist reef like I said, so checking the HP damage there, 27.56, so um, that would not even get fully healed by that uh, other Iroha call that we did, so luckily there wasn't too much damage on him, this was under the uh, threshold, there are only 5k damage you can take, so that's again why not having a healer with this team comp was a risky decision. Um, Coming in, another free use out of Exceed Lance, you know, Amiga Javelin. Here, um, every ability use except for Bartz is really low. Bartz is just going to keep missling away, battering the party and himself. And we're both down to 2% HP. We've got the Paralysis from Rama. we got Terra up. No more attacks from the bosses. There's no real risk of death here. We just got to kill them both at the same time, make sure we don't take any more dot damage, because that HP threshold, like I said, very low. And the 2756 damage already. One more tick, and that's pretty much game over for me, making it through without meeting that requirement. So Vortex comes up, and I'm like, yep, this should be enough, this should kill both of them. And it didn't, so was very worried here, checked. One slice and dice who left on Titus, and I was like, that should for sure be enough with both of them at 1%. So hit that button, did the damage, got the shot, and was like, oh god, the first one died, but the second one did also die there, so... Ended up working out okay in the end, so that's it, that's the full rundown for this fight. Uh, a lot of information to take in there, so please refer to the description if you want a shortened version or a text form of that. And thank you for watching!